Good afternoon to everyone listening. Just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Ethan. I am the digital media specialist here at Gurus. Today, we'll be looking at how to improve your cash conversion cycle with optimized invoicing for clients using NetSuite, also called Dunning Management. To give you a brief overview of what to expect in this webinar, Nicola Lobel, a resident guru on optimizing receivables with Dunning Management, will be guiding you for everything you need to know for improving your cash conversion cycle. But before we proceed, let me tell you a little bit about Guru Solutions as a company. Gurus is recognized as one of the largest NetSuite service providers in all of North America. We've been helping businesses achieve mass growth with NetSuite for 13 years with over 2,100 successful projects to her name. As a seven-year consecutive five-star partner, we have 80 in-house consultants specializing in everything from implementations to customizations, integrations, and support. Even more, we hold close relationships, knowledge, and experience across the entire Oracle NetSuite ecosystem. Firstly, we'll be diving into the accounts receivable world and addressing the standard issues they face. Then we'll be looking at the benefits of the Dunning management process and how it can help solve some of the previously mentioned standard issues. Following that, we'll be looking at a demo of how you can use automated emails and easy to configure templates in NetSuite to collect late payments. Next, there will be a recap for all of you listening and a short presentation on Guru Solutions as a premier NetSuite partner, who we are and the value that we bring to our clients every day. Stay tuned after the end for a short Q&A session with one of our gurus. Now I'll be passing it on to Nick LaBelle. So let's talk about addressing the standard issues. The current situation is you have a company that wants to keep track of the payments. Um, so they are going to run an AR report, so an account receivable report that will show them uh, the picture of where the different customers stand in terms of their payment. Um, so it could be you know anything from due date up until 30 days after due date, then you could also have a column with the 30 to 60 days, 60 to 90, and then 90 plus days. Um, so this will serve as a base in order to follow up with those clients uh, by either communicating by emails or letters and uh, tell them that they are late on payments on either one invoice or multiple invoices, and also that overall their uh, overdue balance is, you know, X amount of dollars. The pain points with that is that it really increases the AR load, and also it's going to play out on the bad debt expense in the uh, medium and, and long run. Um, there's also no centralized interface to see who you should then uh, at what time and have a clear understanding of, you know, in two weeks, in a month, in six weeks, where are you going to stand with all of, of those outstanding balances? Um, there's also the uh, problem with the inconsistency of two things. First of all, the frequency. So do you want to be proactive and send a communication one week before the, um, the invoice is due? Do you want to have something one week after it's due, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, and so on? And also the inconsistency of the message, because if um, the AR department uh, takes care of that and they're trying to come up with you know, communications that make sense, um, they're going to have to develop some, some templates in order to uh, make sure that the message is always the same depending on those on, on where you stand on the timeline and, and the frequency of the message. So those are all uh, pain points that uh, could be part of a manual process. And finally, depending on the volume to manage, it's really hard to uh, put 
the responsibility and the accountability on the AR uh, internal users because it's hard to establish a base of um, subset of clients that the employees will be uh, responsible to take care of and be responsible to um, to follow up uh, and keep track of the, the late payments. So in order to uh, um, help companies uh, with the dunning procedure, that's what has a, a module called the dunning letters module. What, what allows the, the module is three main things. There's a centralized dashboard, as you have with any other roles in the application, with uh, predefined uh, safe searches and portlets that uh, will document um, the overall picture of what needs to be sent to which customer. And that's really important because uh, if you're going to use the what I call semi-automatic process where you at least have a, a visibility of what will be sent before it gets sent then there's always you know the the, the human um, that needs to uh, press send in order to send the communication so there's always um, you know a confirmation from an internal user that the uh, emails or the letters will be printed. Then the uh, second uh, second uh, advantage of the visibility is the ability to configure Dunning templates associated to process flow. And what I mean by that is, um, so each step of the way, either you're looking at seven days before the invoices are due, or afterwards, then you can associate templates that are in sync with uh, the message um, and the strategy, strategy you're, uh, you're sending out to your clients in terms of um, the severity of the message. Okay, well, you know, it's the first notice, so the message will not be the same versus if it's the third notice. So. This can really be uh, applied to the uh, the, um, the um, process flow and also the the way that you kind of uh, make sure that the template and the message inside of those templates reflect where you are in your timeline. Then as uh, the third part of the visibility is also the uh, dunning can happen on a customer or an invoice specific level. So this means that, um, and you'll see it in the demo, you can configure a procedure on the customer or on the invoice. The uh, procedure on the customer allows you to uh, have a clear understanding of where does the customer stand uh, regardless of his invoices. So let's say I have an overdue balance of $1,000 in, you know, in 10 or 20 invoices versus on the opposite side, if we're going for the invoice specific level, then it's gonna it's gonna have a criteria or a, on a, or a condition on each of those invoices. Um, so you know you can you can set up both, and depending on the situation, you're you're gonna want to um, uh, have a criteria that reflects uh, uh, information on one of those two. Second part of the uh, benefits is uh, the automation. So uh, as I was telling earlier, you're able to communicate um, on a fully automated way. So once the procedure is in place, then it's gonna hit some criteria, and the um, letters or the emails will be automatically sent out when the evaluation date uh, gets triggered. Um, you also have the option of having the semi-automatic or what they call the manual way where uh, you have a preview of what, what could have been sent and then the uh, internal user decides on which 
communication needs to be sent or needs to be printed. Um, the second part of the automation is the proactivity. And I already talked about that, uh, meaning that it's not only a matter of um, looking at what is already due, but also looking at what will be due in, let's say, two weeks, let's say, seven, seven, um, seven days or a few days just before it gets, it gets to that period. Um, so that's really neat, and it's sometimes uh, something that is not really communicated to uh, to customers because it takes a lot of effort in order to have that in, in you know in the manual process or kind of manage it. Um, so clients tend to only manage once the invoices are due or once there uh, there is an outstanding balance on the on the customer. The third part of the benefits of the is the international section. So um, two things to mention here. So uh, there's the uh, support for multi-currency and also the localization. So localization includes two things. First of all, the language. So you could have your templates in multiple languages depending on the uh, settings of, uh, of your clients and also the time of communication. So let's say uh, you configure your procedure with evaluation day and evaluation time within that. So instead of having all of the evaluation uh, getting triggered at the same time, it will evaluate depending on your customer, uh, your customer's time zone. So it will, it will kind of, uh, instead of having one time zone and so many evaluation, it will distribute the evaluation so we'll distribute the charge on each of the different timelines uh, or, or time zones you serve, which is really neat. All right, so here is a, a simple uh, diagram showing you the dunning process flow. So on the next uh, slide, we're gonna go ahead with a demo. So the first, part of the uh, configuration needs to, uh, to be uh, done by the Dunning director. So that's one of the two roles associated to the uh, module. You have the Dunning director and the Dunning manager. Dunning director will be the one who's in charge of uh, configuring the module. Then the uh, multiple levels of communication this can, can be uh, either done on a director side or a manager side. Uh, it can also be done by both people. Um, uh, and, and the multiple levels of communication is basically, uh, you know, if you're looking at a timeline and you're looking at a due date on the invoice, where are you gonna communicate with your customer? Are you gonna go ahead with the proactive emails? Are you gonna go ahead only after the fact, so after the due date um, is, is passed, um, and so on. So we're going to review that also on the uh, on the demo. And then the third uh, step would be to review and send emails, and that's predominantly a, a Dunning manager task. So at this point, they're looking at their dashboard with a list of emails. And they basically only have to check the ones that they want to send, and then they can go ahead and, uh, and send those out to, um, to, uh, to their customers. Then the fourth step would be to receive payments, uh, you know, because you're gonna have a better chance of retrieving those payments if you communicate the right information to your customers. And the fifth step would be to, re to reduce the AR load, uh, which was one of our initial pain points. So let's jump ahead in a demo. So as you can see here, we have the uh, Dunning tab with the uh, Dunning director as my role here. Um, so what I have here is the dashboard that's, that comes out of the box with the module. And there's uh, obviously additional uh, safe searches and portlets that come with the, uh, the module. And what I wanna show you here is um, 
basically how the uh, either the dunning links here or what you call you know everything here in the setup is basically the same and it's a it's a chronological uh, way of configuring the module and I'm gonna go through each of those um, in, in, in a bit more detail and then at the end I'm gonna switch over to the dunning manager in order to show you the uh, the uh, either the email or the PDF preview of what what should be sent to the uh, to the client. So let's go ahead on the dunning templates. So dunning templates is obviously how your emails are going to look first of all. So subject body, but also what will be attached to uh, those different templates. So uh, if I take the level well example here. Do I want to attach copies of invoices? Do I want to uh, only have overdue invoices? Do I want to have a statement attached to the, uh, the email? Do I only want to have open transactions on that statement? So these are all options that if you don't have, you know, a module like that in place are really hard to capture each time you want to uh, send uh, those types of communications to your clients. So in this example, we have uh, a, a test level, but we have three different levels. And the difference between them are most likely the, uh, the body, okay? So the message that, uh, that will be inside of, uh, of the template body will be different and also a few of the uh, the options in terms of what what do I want to attach so the second part of the configuration is uh, what we call the level rules so the level rules is uh, in this case you're looking at a five day a 15 day or a 50 plus day uh, so there's nothing proactive here the first one will hit uh, five days after the due date on invoices. And we can have a look at this one in particular. So as you can see, uh, there are amounts depending on the currency uh, on, on, on two things. First of all, the minimum invoice amount and also the total overdue balance on the customer. Um, so, so those reflect how the uh, criteria will work once I hit my uh, five days overdue. And it kind of, uh, kind of uh, works the same way for 15 days, 50 days, or even if we were uh, proactive, it, it would be like a negative amount of days here. So if I want to send a communication seven days ahead of the uh, due date, then I would have a, a minus seven here. So a lot of flexibility on how you configure your, what I call the timeline. The dunning procedure is kind of the main element in terms of, uh, of uh, record types within the module. As you can see, the uh, procedures here, there's one for the customer. So the first one right here, and also one for the invoice. If we look at the customer one, so first of all, you're gonna select your different subsidiaries that will fall into the, uh, the procedure. Then uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have, you know, do you wanna send uh, the schedule automatically or manually? In this case, it's manual. So all of the communications that are being triggered by the, um, the criteria will be attached uh, or will be created and be, uh, be visible on, on the, the uh, email or the PDF link that I'm gonna show you at the end with the, uh, the Dunning Manager uh, responsibility. Um, so, you know, there's multiple ways of uh, having additional criteria in there. You can have additional uh, segmentation with departments, location, classes, and also with dedicated safe searches on invoices or also on customers. In this case, since we're looking at a customer procedure, uh, we can have, uh, you know, a specific safe search in order to 
filter the list of customers we want to associate that procedure with. And then uh, what we have at the bottom are the levels. So the levels that we saw earlier are assigned to the procedure and the levels are also assigned to the template. So the, uh, the different templates we saw at the beginning are now in link with the different, uh, the different levels, which are, you know, uh, how many, how many days, uh, inside of our, our timeline. So the, uh, procedure priority is something that you would have if you are configuring more than one procedure per customer or per invoice. So in this case, since we only have one of each, the priority will be one in, in, in both of them. But that's something that uh, you could uh, you could put in place in terms of uh, of priority if you if you want to have a bit more uh, granularity on on what gets triggered. So the Dunning bulk assignment is having a look at you know your list of customers and try to see what has not uh, been applied yet. So which uh, which subset of uh, customers don't have a Dunning procedure yet. And you can also do that on the invoice basis. So let's let's see the uh, procedure here. And if I have any outstanding invoices, I can see uh, you know with my customer name here and the invoice number, do I want to apply a procedure specifically for those those invoices there's also the uh, possibility of having uh, dunning pause reasons and the dunning pause reasons could happen uh, for different reasons um, most of the time it will it will be uh, you know either a grace period that you want to extend for a specific customer or um, any additional reasons, you know, maybe uh, it's, uh, it's Christmas period or any other reason where you do not want to execute any of the criteria on either the invoice or on the customer. So the, the procedures will uh, be paused uh, and you, they, they will start right after the, uh, the pause uh, is, is, uh, is finished. So the Dunning configurations, uh, here you have a bit more uh, information about, you know, depending on your subsidiary, are you gonna apply the uh, procedures automatically on new customers and also on new invoices? And as you can see here, um, since we have uh, one customer procedure and one invoice procedure, we have decided to put everything automatically on those new records. And I think that's a, that's a best practice. What you have here is the uh, bulk update customer records for Dunning. Uh, and what I mean by that, and I think it would be a better thing to go inside a, uh, uh, one of the uh, customer records. So let's look on this one right here. So the Dunning Test Limited has a company name. And inside of the customer form, what you're gonna see is the uh, Dunning tab, uh, second to last uh, to the right. What you, what you see is the, uh, first of all, the Dunning recipients. So the contacts that are, that are associated to the customer. Um, so within that, that contact list, you can decide who will receive the, uh, the uh, communications. And the main element is the setup. And within the setup, you're going to see your current picture of where the customer stands on the uh, Dunning level. So that's really important. Where do they stand in the process right now? So they're at the Dunning level three. Uh, so we know for a fact that they have a, an outstanding balance. You also have the Dunning manager name. So who's responsible to send the, uh, the information? 
since we're talking about uh, the semi-automatic or the, the, the manual process where you have to uh, click send in order to, uh, to send the communications. Also the last email sent. Okay, so where was, when was the, uh, uh, that last click of, uh, of the button? And the uh, Dunning procedure in place right now. Also, if they have any uh, pause, um, any any pause reasons, uh, you would be able to see that on the on the customer specific level. So, with that said, if we go back to the bulk update, um, first of all, we're going to select a subsidiary, and what we can do here is. Um, change a few fields, a few options on each of the customers inside of the subsidiary. So if I want to change my strategy where before I was sending letters by mail, uh, so I would have something like that where um, everything is sent by mail and then you know I want to be a bit more um, environmentally friendly. Um, I want to change my strategy and go not checked and checked here where everything is uh, being emailed instead of printed. So this will apply at large for all of my uh, customers under the subsidiary. So the email template invoice fields, this one is uh, what I currently have available when I'm going to create my uh, email templates. So this is the, um, the, the column to the right is what I will refer inside of my email templates. And if I have to uh, add any new invoice fields, I'll be able to, to put that here. Uh, so it's kind of a shortcut to the, the whole um, um, field creation specifically for the invoice. So this is the, the overall view of the uh, Dunning Director and how you can access information. You also have the shortcut to customers and invoices. And here uh, I'm going to switch over to the Dunning Manager because as I talked about earlier, it's more in line with uh, his, uh, his tasks. Um, so the uh, different... Um, the different portals and the portlets, I should say, and the safe searches that are inside those different portlets um, look a bit different than what we had on director. Um, and this would be everything that has already been sent. So once you uh, once you see this, you're able to 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 say, well, okay. Here is uh, my uh, customer Dunning ALB, and here is the last email sent. So it's it's been more than you know a year and a half, let's say. Um, so I'm gonna click on email, and I'm gonna go see what do I need to uh, send uh, at a particular moment because of the evaluation date. So depending on your procedures, you're gonna have. Uh, evaluation dates. So if I look at the example here for the uh, Acme customer, there was an evaluation on September 12th and then there was another one on se September 20th. So um, uh, the, uh, the evaluation is always uh, seven days in between and that's something that I would be able to configure. So for this particular case, I can see that I have two levels. So the first level has never never been sent to Acme. So in this case, what I would do is I would click on the level two and go ahead and click on say it and on send right here. And why do I skip level one? Is because uh, Basically, you know, I don't want to send two communications at the same time with kind of the same message. I don't want to have, you know, an overflow of emails going, uh, going out. 
So since the evaluation period on the level two was already done and confirmed, I only have to send that one out. And now um, at least I'm at the right level of uh, message within my, my, uh, my email. So, you know, it used the, the, the right template in there, uh, being the template that I associated to level two. And also it's not going to send, you know, three emails uh, from my company to all of the customers with outstanding balances. So in this case, you would add the Dunning Test Limited customer and you would be able to see the uh, different emails that have been sent from the uh, Dunning Letters module. So for, for example, I have the subject here, second notice, overdue payments. And then I have uh, the ability to click on view and I have a bit more information about what has been sent. And as you can see, there is uh, an invoice that is linked to the, uh, the message and I can specify any additional information uh, on the, uh, the body of the email. And also I have a bit more information on the recipients, if there were any attachments uh, sent with the email and also the uh, read receipts uh, to see a bit uh, how uh, the, uh, the customer uh, has, uh, has uh, seen or not my, uh, my email. And this is the overall view of the, uh, the module. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the demo and the information provided. Thank you. Thank you for the demo, Nick. To recap on what we looked at during Nick's presentation, the Dunning module for NetSuite is designed to provide a global view on every communication sent regarding receivables. By using Dunning management, your account's receivable team will be able to streamline their cash to conversion process with easy and automated Dunning letters for follow-ups on pending invoices. Some of the highlights will include dedicated dashboard, the ability to schedule frequency for sending Dunning letters, and choose between automated and manual settings, as well as the benefit of lowering overhead on your account's receivable team by automating an otherwise heavily time-consuming process. Now let's look at how Gurus can help you. Firstly, we offer a true partnership approach with our clients. This is very important, as before undertaking any project, we firstly strive to understand your business needs and processes to ensure that you have the right solution that's a fit for you. With our 13 plus years of proven process, we've developed flexible modes of engagement to match your skill set and availability. Our collaborative workshop methodology ensures that our clients are always engaged throughout the implementation process. But most importantly, after your implementation is complete, we continue to support you with our ongoing account management, whether it be general support or further optimization, our team is always there to help you. Thank you for tuning in for a webinar on improving your cash conversion cycle by optimizing invoicing for clients with NetSuite, otherwise known as Dunning Management. Now stay tuned for a brief Q&A and have a great afternoon. Starting now.